Hey guys, so I wanted to do a short Q&A video to celebrate hitting 4,000 subscribers. I also got this advent calendar, but I realize you won't be here during Christmas, so why not build it right now? So I'll, I'll be reading some questions, answering them uh, while building some cute Harry Potter Lego sets. So the most popular question I get on the channel is what skills do I need to become a data analyst? Uh, I've made a lot of videos on the topic and I uh, highly recommend you guys check that out. I even have some roadmaps. Uh, but in general, data analyst is a very wide uh, job role. Some data analysts just use Excel or Google Sheets and some go into predictive modeling, machine learning, uh, hypothesis testing and stuff like that. So it just depends what you wanna do. But I recommend anyone who wants to get into the field of data analytics and data science to learn a programming language, whether it be R or Python, a BI tools such as Looker, uh, Power BI, or Tableau, and uh, SQL. SQL is pretty important. I think anyone, whether they do software engineering, data science, data engineering, uh, machine learning, they should learn SQL. It's a very good tool, very, very good language that is used um, pretty sure in a lot of tech companies. So if you are looking to become a data analyst or want to work in the field of data, SQL should be your number one choice and everything else uh, is building blocks to increase your salary, increase your skill set, uh, make your life easier when you're analyzing data. There's also this tool that I use, it's called datanerd.tech. It was made by a fellow YouTuber in the field of data. Uh, it's basically a live table or chart that shows you the top uh, requested skills for uh, different careers in the tech fields such as software engineering, data engineering, data science, machine learning, stuff like that. You can also filter by country, experience level, stuff like that. So yeah, I, I checked out that tool pretty frequently just to make sure that I'm up to date. But if I'm not wrong, uh, what I said, SQL R, Python, maybe some cloud services like AWS is also uh, a good skill to learn. So yeah, stuff like that. I'll leave a link to that tool and the YouTuber who made it down below. That's in a textbook or two if you wanna do some exercises too. But yeah, just explore YouTube. There's a lot of free resources out there that you can use uh, just to learn. And then if you wanna showcase your learning, do projects on websites like Kaggle or GitHub, uh, I have a couple of five minute projects on my channel that talk about some basic uh, projects you can showcase on your portfolio. Uh, so yeah, just explore the free resources that are there out, out for you. You don't need to take a course, you don't need to take a bootcamp, but those will definitely help. Uh, they're just shortcuts or you know cheat codes to help you get where you wanna be faster. But yeah, everything you need is available to you for free. Data analytics is one of the easiest fields to break into, uh, especially if you wanna progress to become something else in the field of data, like. Uh, data scientist, machine learning engineer, data engineer. A lot of my coworkers have done that. Even my uh, director of data science used to be data architect. Uh, he was a PhD student in geology and transitioned to data science. So yeah, it's a pretty easy field to break into and you can grow your career, grow your salary, you know, a lot from there. I highly recommend starting as a data analyst and I have a lot of videos on the channel talking about it. So I'll leave a playlist down below. So the next question that I get asked pretty frequently is how to land an internship or a job. I think this question depends very heavily uh, based on where you are, if you're in the United States or not. If you're currently enrolled in school like a boot camp or a university, uh, or maybe if you have a degree. So if you're in the United States and you're currently a student, things are easier for you. Companies tend to look for interns who are enrolled, uh, who have at least a semester more to go after they finish their internship program, uh, just because they wanna invest in uh, candidates who they think will stay longer and have uh, more value by completing their degree. I personally, it took me about 350 applications, uh, about a dozen plus interviews to get an internship. I got eight offers, but I also had experience with unpaid internships before and a lot of projects, a portfolio. Uh, I asked for referrals from classmates and professors. So I pretty much pulled out every trick I had in the bag uh, and it worked for me. I have a couple videos on the channel talking about how to land an internship. Uh, I go pretty in detail on what steps I would do, what steps I would take right now. Uh, the main thing you wanna look for is perfecting your resume because once you get your foot through the door, interviews are gonna be a lot easier. The technical sides are pretty basic if you do a couple uh, SQL questions, uh, watch a couple YouTube videos, learn the basics of programming, you're, you're gonna be fine. Uh, but your resume with ATS scans, you wanna make sure your resume is hitting all the keywords necessary. Uh, you don't have holes in your resume, you're not lying, it's within one page. Uh, it's easy for your uh, re recruiter to read and understand. 
So yeah, you wanna make sure your resume passes that ATS scan. I have a video talking about ATS scans and how to pass an ATS scan. I personally use uh, the tool jobscan.co to get my ATS score and I try to make sure it's above 90 for the position I'm trying to apply. Yeah, that, that's pretty much the biggest tip I can give you. Uh, if you're not getting any interviews, one, maybe you haven't applied for enough jobs, two, you're probably getting screened out in the ATS scan, but aside from that, if your resume is good, you have a decent portfolio, I don't see why uh, you can't land an internship, maybe just increase your application frequency, maybe start reaching out for referrals to your classmates, your friends, or people on LinkedIn. Connections is a very underrated uh, tool that can get you jobs. I've learned that uh, from my coworkers and also friends, so look out for connections and referrals. That's another big tip I can give. If you think you don't have enough experience to get an internship, you could do what I did, do some projects, like I said, on websites like Kaggle or GitHub. Uh, go get an unpaid internship. Uh, they are pretty lenient with their hiring requirements, so you, you pretty much can walk through the door right away if you get an opportunity. Uh, or you could you know, work on campus if you are a student, go get a research assistant job or a teaching assistant job, or just be an unpaid TA or grader for your professor. There's a lot of things that you can do to get an experience, a relevant experience if you are a student. So. Don't miss out on that opportunity. I highly recommend checking out that video I made a couple weeks ago about how you can get an experience uh, while still being in school or if you don't have any already. Open source projects like uh, projects on GitHub, uh, stuff like that are pretty pretty good too. They are like uh, validation stamps from other people that you know this guy can code, this guy knows what he's doing. So I would definitely look into contributing to something like an open source project or competitions, hackathons, stuff like that. That is a, that, that, that's a good way to stand out. All right, the next question I get is how do I manage my time? So for those of you who don't know, I am a full-time student in my final semester. I'm also a full-time data analyst at a startup. So I, I'm taking, what, four classes, five classes this semester, and I work 40 hours, close to 60 hour weeks. But what people don't know is that my job is remote, so I work from home. I follow my calendar pretty strictly. I've blocked off times where I study, where I go for meetings, where I go to class, where I take my exams and stuff like that. Uh, honestly, it's more about how you leverage your time. That's what I think is more important because you know everyone has 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, but how they choose to use that time, whatever the restrictions may be, uh, is more important. If I have to go to class, I will go to class, but if I don't have to go to class and I don't think I'll find value from that class, I may choose to skip class uh, you know, do the revision with the slides at home. Uh, but let's say attendance is required, I'll go to class and maybe I'll get a couple tickets down. But that's not the case for all classes. Sometimes attendance is required. So in that case, I will do, you know, work in class or I'll take uh, quizzes or assignments in class just to, you know, kill two birds with one stone. That works out for me. It might not work out for everyone. Uh, so feel free to try it for yourself. So just take it with a grain of salt. Some people are just better uh, learners in a public setting like a classroom and others tend to learn better at home. So, you know, figure out what works for you and then stick with it. The most important part, like I said, is how you leverage your time. So, you know, meetings out of my control, you know, people put meetings on your calendar. Um, more, like, more, more often than not, you'll have to go to them. But uh, if it's like a big meeting with like 90 people and I know my input is not needed or I'm not gonna gain much value or push the needle far with that, that meeting, I'll try to do other work during that meeting like uh, tickets or edit videos, script videos, or you know plan out my personal pr projects or stuff like that. I have the privilege of working at a startup that is people first and they prioritize my personal development as well as my you know career goals, my individual goals. So. If I don't have much work going that week, uh, I'm not needed as much, I can focus on other things, but if they need me more, let's say it's a busy week, you know, Q3 is pretty uh, busy for most companies. Uh, it's the same here. So yeah, it's very situational based. I just managed to pivot and adapt as it goes. Like uh, a couple weeks ago, I was flown out to Minnesota for a company trip. I also have midterms and uh, quizzes that I had to do, but I made it work. I'm not gonna complain if someone chooses to fly me out uh, to a different state. Uh, sets me up in a nice hotel and provides me with food and entertainment, I will take that opportunity gladly. So yeah, I'm very privileged to be where I am. I'm grateful to be where I am. Uh, I'm not gonna forget that. So I'm gonna do the best I can to make the best of the situation. The next question I get pretty frequently or see on the internet all the time is uh, the question about AI and how uh, AI is gonna take over our jobs or our data jobs gonna be extinct. My personal take is no. I personally believe there's always gonna be a need for someone to maintain, monitor, and manage 
those uh, systems. Uh, just like with machine learning models, once you've built the pipeline, you still need to maintain, monitor, and manage the pipeline and uh, retire it if it's no longer useful. So I think the careers are gonna be there. I just think that certain jobs, certain tasks, mundane tasks or repetitive tasks can be uh, removed. Uh, like for us in my company, we're looking for uh, a GPT tool to reduce ad hoc tickets, questions, uh, simple requests that people can do, self-servicing uh, stuff. So yeah, I think AI is gonna be useful in that aspect, but there are certain things that AI can't do just yet. And I don't think in the near future, at least they will be. So. We'll see, I could be wrong, but I personally think uh, as long as you continue to learn and adapt and pivot with the feel, you're gonna be fine. All right, the last question I wanna answer in this video is what is the future of this channel? So I started this channel as a hobby. I was in my senior year. Uh, I had a lot of free time. This was before I was going into my uh, internship, my summer internship. I was doing a part-time internship for us, uh, for another company, it was unpaid, but I just felt like I wanted to do something more. I just like to keep busy. I like to maximize my time. I just can't sit still, I guess. So I decided to, you know, make a commitment to myself and say, you know, I'll post a video every single week. Regardless of the outcome, I just wanted to stay consistent and prove to myself that I could do something. I would learn new skills along the way, of course, like editing and uh, talking to a camera. If you go back to one of the first few videos on the channel, you'll notice, at least I hope you'll notice that there's a big change in terms of like production, editing, and, uh, confidence on the camera so yeah it was more of a personal challenge uh and i guess some people found value in the videos i posted so uh i decided to stick with it uh it also helped me with my company uh i didn't intend for anyone in my company to know that i was making these videos but uh, they found out and they learned that I was capable of doing more than the, the roles that I was given. So they increased my responsibilities, which eventually landed me my full-time job. And now I'm working there while studying. So yeah, overall things worked out, maybe not in the way I thought it would have, but definitely do uh, appreciate how it worked out. I personally uh, like making videos in general. Data analytics in specific is great, uh, but I just don't think it's for me long-term. I found a liking to data engineering and data science and uh, I'm working towards uh, a more machine learning based role right now. So uh, we'll see how that goes. This channel should be uh, continuing the way it is. Uh, basically just me sharing my experiences, what worked for me and tips on what I would do if I were to start over again. Uh, I'm also very interested in businesses and finances. I read a lot of finance books or business books. So I, I might share stuff about that. Uh, plan to do a lot of cool things like launching a course in the next couple of years. So we'll see. Uh, personally, I just wanna be creative. I wanna be able to share my thoughts, uh, hopefully help someone else uh, who is 10 steps behind me, two steps behind me. Uh, as long as I'm continuing to stay myself and helping others, I think uh, that's a success in my book. But yeah, if you guys have anything in specific that you wanna see on the channel, uh, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I'm happy to take in any suggestions at all. Like right now, I'm still a student, so I've posted a lot of student content like about how to study, how to be productive, how to manage your schedule. But in a couple of weeks, I'll be graduating, so I might not be a student, at least not formally uh, anymore. Maybe I'll join a graduate program, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so I guess it just depends on where I'm at in my life and uh, my career, so we'll see. So yeah, just stay tuned, I guess, if you wanna follow along for the ride. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. This was not meant to be a super educational video. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But I just wanted to make a less formal video, a more casual sit down talk, uh, hopefully answer some of the questions you might have asked or thought about. As always, if you have any more questions, comments or concerns, leave them down below. I hopefully will reply to every single comment, at least while I have time. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Also, I don't know when this video is going to come out. If it's before Christmas, Merry Christmas. If it's after, Happy New Year.